Coming up on Ag Week TV, it could be another good sugar beet crop in the Red River Valley. Dicamba spray drift is a growing problem. Hear from a farmer who's been affected. Minnesota has some of the highest crop condition ratings in the nation, but are they really the sweet spot for yield? We'll find out coming up. And meet a farmer celebrating his 100th birthday this weekend. Welcome to Ag Week TV. I'm Shauna Olson. Crop ratings for corn and soybeans nationally have been running well below last year. One exception is Minnesota, where NAS crop ratings are 80% good to excellent for corn and soybeans at 74%. So will Minnesota be anywhere near last year's record-setting yields? Michelle Rook has more. Minnesota's corn and soybean crop won't be the record it was a year ago. However, crop conditions are better here than in many areas of the Corn Belt. That includes the drought-stricken Dakotas, and even the I states have had their challenges, which has been reflected in declining crop ratings. So I think if you look at that uh, situation here, Minnesota is kind of a sweet spot in retrospect. However, he says the state is a tale of two crops, with the east faring better than the west. That's because those areas have received ample moisture, and so farmers there are optimistic about corn yields. Actually, I think we're going to be comparable to last year if, if things progress the way they are. I'm anticipating we can get that 220 to 230 bushel yield on the corn side. However, as you move to the north and west, rains have been below normal. So that combined with the heat during pollination will result in lower yields than a year ago. Last year we had best crop ever. We probably average 210, I'm guessing we're already 20 bushels off of that in corn. There's still time for beans, but farmers are generally not as optimistic about the prospects for this crop either because of the planting and emergence issues. We're going to be above trend line, but we're not going to be the where we were last year. So, you know, we're probably talking 50 to 60 bushel beans. And with the variability across the state, average yields won't break last year's records for corn or beans. In Minnesota, I'm Michelle Brook reporting for Ag Week. This week's Crop Stop takes I'll us to take Rothsay that. in west central Minnesota. That's where Mikkel Pates found Bryant Hogrood and his son-in-law Lance Johnson getting the equipment ready for harvest. They say thanks to timely rains, their crops are generally looking good and some of their wheat will be ready to harvest next week. Right now the wheat looks really, really good and the price of wheat has come up. It's a lot better than what we were looking at this spring. And if we could get the yields, we're hoping, you know, for 70 to 80 bushel plus wheat, we can do okay on that. The sugar beets are looking excellent also. Soybeans are a little bit of a disappointment for us in this area. We have some very nice fields and then we've got a few quarters that leave a little bit to be desired. Hagrud says they're looking at 70 to 80 bushel wheat and 30 ton per acre sugar beets. Our next crop stop takes us to Carrington in central North Dakota, where the predominant crop is soybeans along with some wheat, barley and dry beans. Extension cropping specialist Greg Andrews says most of the crops went in early and although May was dry, they've had pretty good rains since. In general, we're, we're in good shape. Most people were able to put the crops in early. Um, we did deal with some dry soils as uh, the planting season went on. And whenever we struggle with stand establishment, we struggle all year long with getting an optimum crop yield. Yeah. Wheat harvest started last week in the Carrington area. Andres says the quality looks good, but they don't have a handle on yields. It's shaping up to be another above normal sugar beet crop in the Red River Valley and the region. American Crystal Sugar Company and Mindac Farmers Cooperative are gearing up for the harvest. American Crystal expects to start pre-pile harvest on August 15th. Mindac is starting a month later. Mikkel Pates has more on this year's crop. While nothing is certain, this year's sugar beet crop looks to be a good one. There's a lot of factors that we put into place is, uh, when we make our yield estimates and try to predict station averages and district averages. Planning date 
stand, the amount of beets that come up after planting, canopy closure dates, those are things we look uh, factor into our equation. The tops are turning yellow a little earlier than they'd like due to the lack of rain, but they are seeing higher sugar content than average. And so far, growers have been doing a good job of controlling yep. Cercospora leaf spot disease, so that shouldn't have much of an effect on yields. Cercospora for us, it impacts sugar, it imp impacts root quality, and then of course it impacts the storability of the beet, all three of which are incredibly important to us. The biggest thing for us though is going to be the quality. With just a couple of weeks before the pre-pile beet campaign, this is Michael Pates at Glendon, Minnesota for Ag Week. American Crystal's pre-pile harvest runs until October 1st when the full harvest starts. Consequences of dry weather continue even after much of the region saw some recent rains. One big concern ranchers face is the lack of feed resources for winter. NDSU Extension Livestock Specialist Gerald Stucka says North Dakota is in somewhat of a unique situation for dealing with drought and lack of hay. Stucka says the state is blessed with tremendous feed resources other than what's in the pastures. But they're not always feed resources you think of for cattle. But if you think about the byproducts that we produce in this state, we have a wheat industry and, and we feed weed mids, the byproduct of the wheat milling industry. We feed corn byproducts, whether it's corn gluten feed or distiller's grains. There's tremendous amounts of those available in North Dakota. We feed the byproducts of the barley or the malting industry, barley sprouts and barley pellets, beet pulp and beet tailings. Now you have to be a little bit cautious. You gotta be careful about what you feed and how much you feed, but you can feed cows in confinement or in different ways than we normally think of traditionally. Stucka says some ranchers should also consider moving their cattle to another state for the winter where feed is more plentiful. Coming up on Ag Week TV, the head of the EPA visits North Dakota. Plus, we'll hear from a man who has been farming for nearly a century. My name is Joel Kaler owner-operator of Kaler Farms in Lidgewood, North Dakota. We make a patented product called the Cornstock Guide. It's made out of UHMW, ultra-high molecular weight poly, which is extremely durable. Typically what you'll see on corn heads is the idler chain in the sprocket sticks out. We attach it to the side of a snout. Our product will keep all the wear off the snout and get it to come into the head smoother without bouncing. Department line one, please. The right tool for the job could be a pair of Ariat boots. Pull on safety toe protection with an available waterproof barrier for all day comfort. Ariat is a customer favorite because they add design to their gear, never sacrificing function or safety. And we always have the guaranteed lowest price. Ariat flame resistant work shirts, jackets, and jeans are some of the most durable you'll find. They work on the job site at Uptown Saturday night. Home of economy, where your dollar buys more. I'm one pony, one thirty, one thirty. I'm fifty-five. Once around the block, two hundred and twelve. Five right here, and I have them. Times up. If you're thinking about selling a piece of land or you're looking to sell some farm equipment, or if you're thinking about a retirement or involved in an estate, give us a call. We'll sit down and tell you all about the Steffes way. We think it's a good way. That's how we approach it. If any of those are in your plans, give us a call or go to steffesgroup.com. Learn all about us. Hope to hear from you. Introducing the new Challenger 1000 series, tractors unlike any other manufactured by Agco. Redefining what a wheel tractor is capable of when it comes to wheel slip, power to ground, and fuel economy. Today, it's not enough just to be tough. You've got to be smarter than everyone else, too. Contact your Challenger dealer today to get in the seat of the new Challenger 1000. Superior engineering, superior performance, superior productivity. The next generation of tractors from your Challenger dealer. For a limited time, Titan Machinery, your local Case IH dealer, is offering 0% financing for 60 months for qualified customers on a large portion of our used combines inventory. For a complete list of our best used combine deals, visit combine17.com or contact your local Titan Machinery store. In addition to long-term 0% financing, Titan Machinery is also offering 12 months free full machine warranty on select late model used Case IH combines. Don't delay. Go to combine17.com or call your local Titan Machinery dealership before the program ends. Scott Pruitt, head of the EPA, paid a visit to North Dakota this week. He's gathering input on the federal government's proposed revision of the Federal Waters of the U.S. Rule, or WOTUS. 
The EPA has proposed repealing the Obama-era regulation that extended the reach of the federal government over small waterways. Pruitt met with Governor Doug Burgum, Senator John Hoven, and Representative Kevin Kramer, along with several farm groups. Pruitt says the current law is just too restrictive for farmers and ranchers. We're getting rid of the one that's deficient. The, the 2015 rule that was enlarged and over-encompassing that would take potholes in North Dakota and dry creek beds in western Oklahoma as a water in the United States, we're getting rid of that rule and then we're replacing it with a definition that's consistent with the authority, the intent, the text of the Clean Water Act. Under a new proposal, the government would go back to enforcing rules from 2008 when deciding whether a waterway is subject to federal pollution control oversight. Earl Mollinger has been involved in farming for about 97 years, nearly his entire life. The Oslo, Minnesota farmer turns 100 on August 14th, and his family and friends are throwing him a party to celebrate. As Jonathan Knutson found, Earl credits his long life to keeping active and staying involved with the farm. Americans in general are living longer. So are farmers and ranchers. This Minnesota farmer has had an especially long career. I don't know, I thought when people got 100 they were really old, but I don't feel that old. Earl Mullinger has been involved in farming his whole life here at Oslo. He doesn't actively farm now, but he's still very involved with the farm, which raises wheat, soybeans, and sugar beets. Well, I've farmed a thousand acres, and, but I don't go out in the field anymore. I figure I'm a windshield farmer. Earl rents out his land, but he still decides how to manage the farm. In fact, he picked up a tip on the golf course that led to an attractive wheat sale. On the way home, I got a phone in the car and I called up El Rado or Market, and they said $6.19, so I sold 5,000 bushels. <laughs> and that was most I got for wheat for at least three, day, three years. Earl has some tips for a long and active life. Keep involved in things, keep your mind active, and exercise. Many things in egg have changed over the past century, but senior farmers are as important as ever. For Egg Week, I'm Jonathan Knudsen. Earl will be celebrating his 100th birthday Sunday at UND's Alumni Center. Coming up on the Soil Health Minute, we'll talk about how we're including cover crops in this beautiful sunflower field. But first, many crops could still use some rain. Is there any in our forecast? Your AgriWeather Outlook is next. We're excited to bring you the new AgWeek app with useful features and the latest news and information. Get your AgWeek news, weather, and the latest episodes of AgWeek TV. Plus, see real-time information on the futures market and view local cash bids for your crops. Stay updated and take Ag Week with you. Download the new Ag Week app today. This is Dennis Beliski reminding you, we do auctions and we do them well. You've built your operation with hard work and when it's time to sell, all or part, you deserve the best. Details from repairs and preparation to promotion and settlements are not routine. Chances are you'll only do this once, so we'll tailor an auction just for you and get it done right. On site at your farm or added to one of our highly successful Alaris Center auctions, we have the skill, reputation, and integrity to meet your needs with best-in-class commitment and quality service. Find us at resourceauction.com or call 701-757-4015. My name is Joel Kaler, owner operator of Kaler Farms in Lidgewood, North Dakota. We make a patented product called a cornstalk guide. It helps guide corn stalks into the grabs in the chains a lot smoother without losing corn. The corn stalk, when it comes off of our product, it's already on the gathering chain instead of being able to hit that idler. Our product will keep all the wear off the snout and get it to come into the head smoother without bouncing. Mayo Manufacturing, your Red River Valley source for Batco. Mayo Manufacturing, your Red River Valley Batco dealer. 
Martinson Ag Risk Management offers a variety of crop marketing and crop insurance packages to our customers. With over 40 years of experience, our dedicated staff works hard to ensure you get the best advice on crop insurance, marketing, and risk management. Contact Randy or any of the staff at Martinson Ag Risk Management today at 701-205-4200 or visit us online at martinsonag.com. Weather portion of Ag Week, I expect another pattern change yet before the month of August is over, which will bring some significant changes. There will be a few storm chances into the northern plains and upper Midwest, not like daily storms, but a couple of uh, juicy looking storm chances for those places still wanting for rainfall. As far as the temperatures go, this week still looks fairly mild, but I do think there will be some heat building back during the latter part of August. May not be 100 degree heat, but I do think it'll be some fairly hot weather. As far as the jet stream goes and the temperature patterns go this week, it's still fairly warm throughout the Rocky Mountains, even up into the Canadian Rockies. But with this dip in the jet stream, most of the Midwest and the East is still enjoying fairly mild summertime temperatures. Over the course of the week, temperatures will flip back and forth, but a, a big wave coming down around midweek is going to drop through the upper Midwest and send some changes to the jet stream pattern. And as that happens, we're going to start to see the heat beginning to kind of get reinforced and getting a little stronger in the western states. It's not really going to move in mass into the upper Midwest or the northern Great Plains except on the western periphery, but I do think it'll be pretty hot again out over the Rocky Mountain states and we'll have to keep an eye on where that heat ends up going. As far as precipitation goes this week, going to start off with uh, scattered storms down on the Gulf Coast area. And as this uh, trough of low pressure comes in, there will likely be some areas of storminess down here in the south and along the middle Atlantic. But the more interesting feature will be this wave as it moves into the upper Midwest. I do expect a round of heavy thunderstorms, some part of the eastern Dakotas, Minnesota. That will likely be a one day or one night thing and it'll quickly drop on down, curve east. And I don't know how big this is going to be in the uh, Corn Belt, but there may be a pretty good chance for some significant rains with some of that weather before or that ends up moving out to sea. That's the second week. We're talking August 20th to 26th. Back to school. Interesting time of year. There will be some stormy weather we'll have to keep our eye on. And there will eventually be some rain coming into the west. And out of that, there's going to eventually be some heat building back into the northern plains. I think I don't know exactly how hot it's going to be. Forecasting temperatures week and a half out is always difficult. Don't know if this will be 90s and 100s. Probably not. Most likely upper 80s to 90s. But I do think there'll be some hot weather in the Great Plains and uh, warming back up again throughout the uh, central part of the Midwest. So it's not like summer's come to a close. We've had a very cool start to the month of August and we're starting to see a few rain showers on the increase. I think we're still going to finish up with a dry summer. But there will be a few significant rainstorm chances over the next couple of weeks. The weather will stay mild this week, but sometime during that second week in the period here, look for some hot weather to build back into the northern plains and parts of the upper Midwest. If you get right down to it, what's a farmer's job? Well, farmers' job is to feed people. Farmers collectively, our job is to feed the world. At Peterson Farm Seed, we get to have a, a little bit bigger picture right in our region. We get to help those farmers that we work with increase their productivity, increase the yields that they get on their farms, and as a result, uh, more people can eat. For over 40 years, Northside Implement has been your Gell and Vermeer dealer in Webster, South Dakota and Lidgerwood, North Dakota. With new equipment including feeding, grain handling, haying and skid steer, as well as a nice selection of used equipment including sprayers, spreaders, seating, as well as tractors and loaders. Northside Implement stands behind the equipment they sell with quality service guaranteed. See us for all your repairs and parts, from tillage to skid steer loaders to combines and everything in between. Contact Dave, Lydell, Tom or Chris today at Northside Implement or visit our website for our complete equipment listing. In today's marketplace, maximizing your harvest is more valuable than ever. Improve the efficiency of your operation by adding a Crary Air Reel to your harvester today. A continuous stream of high-velocity air quickly feeds crop back to the auger, getting your crop off the cutter bar and into the header. This minimizes shattering and reduces the amount of header loss. At harvest time, every second counts and every bean counts. 
so you can count on Crary. Field Drainage Inc. has perfected the art of agricultural drainage by helping hundreds of farmers since 1978. We are a second generation family owned business for over 35 years. The Field Drainage Inc. team will work closely with you to conduct a thorough analysis of your needs and expectations. Provide an estimate that fits your budget, perform all work in a timely and professional manner, and provide continued service after installation. Field Drainage Inc., your trusted drain tile installation company for over 35 years. Located in the heart of the Red River Valley, Bloomfield Enterprises sells the finest trailers in the business. Family owned and operated since 1997, Bloomfield Enterprises prides themselves on carrying a wide variety of trailers for customers to choose from. With Bloomfield Enterprises, you can be assured that customer service is more than just a phrase. With a full service shop and repair center, we are committed to take care of our customers even after the sale. Whether you're in the market for a new trailer or good quality farm equipment, we have just what you're looking for. Call today or visit us online at bloomfieldtrailers.com. The Ag Week Soil Health Minute is sponsored by the North Dakota Corn Council and the North Dakota Soybean Council. Farmers are getting creative with fitting cover crops into their rotation. Extension Soil Health Specialist Abby Wick takes us to a sunflower field in southeast North Dakota where one farm is using cover crops to achieve multiple goals. We're in a field in the Wapiton area where we're looking at how we can integrate cover crops into sunflower production. We have a couple goals that we're trying to achieve. The first is to bring in beneficial insects. So if we choose a cover crop mix where the species flower throughout the growing season, we can attract other beneficials like surfid flies and ladybugs to really control pests in this field and help reduce some of those pressures. The next goal is to control weeds so that we pick our green. We wanna choose species that we can control and not let mother nature choose them for us. So in this field, there is a pre-emerge applied. The sunflower were then seeded on 30 inch row spacing followed immediately by the seeding of the cover crops. Some of the different cover crops that we chose in this area, we have buckwheat, a field pea that you can see is flowering. We also have oats, crimson clover. Here's some flax that had flowered earlier. We used yellow mustard to flower early in the growing season and draw in beneficial insects. Buckwheat is used to help release phosphorus from the soil. We use flax to help with phosphorus release and also to support mycorrhizal fungi. Crimson clover and winter pea to help with nitrogen fixation in the soil. Oats to support mycorrhizal fungi, but then also to include a grass with a fibrous root system into this cover crop mix. This is just one example of a farmer initiated approach to include cover crops into a rotation. At NDSU, we're trying to help this farmer evaluate the system and we'll post findings on the NDSU Soil Health webpage. A neighbor's herbicide spray drift is taking a bite out of a Sharon, North Dakota farmer's soybean crop. Perry Osmo says his neighbor's dicamba-resistant beans are waist-high and flourishing, while his are a foot tall and may only yield 5 to 10 bushels an acre, rather than the 30 they expected. Osmo believes the neighbor's herbicide spray spread like a cloud over his soybeans, curling the leaves and stunting their growth. Osmo says he doesn't blame his neighbor or even BASF, the company that makes the chemical. He thinks something should be done to prevent the spray drift. I know there will be some significant damage on the uh, soybeans that were right next to the dicamba variety. And then as far as the rest of it, that's with the curled leaves, we won't know till we get out there and harvest it. NDSU set up a way for people to report similar problems through its Ag Dakota listserv. The U of M extension is also collecting information on dicamba damage to beans. Up next on Ag Week TV, we'll see how grazing is bringing new life to a wildlife refuge. WDAY 970 AM has added the Red River Farm Network to its lineup. Join the Red River Farm Network team as we partner with Ag Week to cover the area's number one industry, agriculture. Join us Monday through Friday for Country Morning at 7 AM, opening markets at 8.30, market updates at 9.30, 10.30, and 11.30, closing markets at 1.30. We're committed to reporting agriculture's business on the Red River Farm Network, Ag Week, and WDAY 970 AM. Advanced Biofuel for America's diesel engines is clean burning and made from renewable sources like soybean oil. Biodiesel fuel works in any diesel engine, reducing emissions, helping us breathe cleaner air. Biodiesel adds value to North Dakota soybeans, creating jobs, improving the environment, increasing 
our energy independence. Biodiesel. It starts with soybeans. It's fueling America. Be sure to mark your calendars for Dakota Fest, August 15th, 16th, and 17th in Mitchell, South Dakota. Featuring over 500 suppliers, education sessions from SDSU Extension, and the all-new Dakota Fest Family Fun Event, Pig Races. Sponsored by American Family Insurance. For a discounted admission and to download the show app sponsored by AKE Safety Equipment, visit dakotafest.com today. Dakota Fest is sponsored by South Dakota State University Extension, Farm Credit Services of America, and Farm Bureau Financial Services. We're excited to bring you the new Ag Week app with useful features and the latest news and information. Get your Ag Week news, weather, and the latest episodes of Ag Week TV. Plus, see real-time information on the futures market and view local cash bids for your crops. Stay updated and take Ag Week with you. Download the new Ag Week app today. Every year, 40% of all food in the U.S. never gets eaten. 40%. That's almost half the food we produce. Food waste is a serious problem. It impacts all of us. And it's expensive. Your family is throwing $1,500 a year in the trash. We're working hard to put food waste on the chopping block. And you can do the same at home. Learn how to cook it, store it, and share it. Just don't waste it. Go to savethefood.com. Ag Week TV, presented by Kaler Farms. The Chase Lake Wildlife Refuge is coming back to life thanks to an unusual management approach. The refuge in central North Dakota is being revitalized by a project that allows cattle and sheep to graze grasslands that hadn't been pastured for decades. Jonathan Knudsen shows us how it's working. Some people think that birds and grazing don't mix. What's happening here at Chase Lake proves otherwise. It's been incredible. Neil Shook came to manage the Chase Lake Wildlife Refuge in Central North Dakota in 2012. He noticed right away what was missing. When I first got here, I would walk out across the prairie and I'd see maybe just a couple of species of grasses. But the biggest thing was what I heard and, and saw, which wasn't a lot. I wouldn't hear the insects buzzing around. I wouldn't see them. I wouldn't see the birds chasing the insects. Braden Kudig ranches near the refuge and now grazes sheep and cattle on it. Once, it was like CRP land with a lot of dead, matted grass. Now, after grazing, it's come back to life. It's more diverse. There's more plants growing, different kinds of plants, birds. The environment has changed so much that there's a lot of different types of birds showing up now. It's improved a lot. Now, when I walk around, you hear the insects, all kinds of insects. You see them flying around. You see the birds going after the insects. Um, so from a, a biological diversity standpoint, it's been an, the change has been incredible. Grazing is good for livestock. And yes, it's good for birds too. For Ag Week, I'm Jonathan Knutson. Thanks for watching this week's edition of Ag Week TV. For all your ag news, go to agweek.com. We'll see you next week.